Hello ladies and gentlemen, Vizzy here with a world building video. Another while well, I'm uh, heading out for a walk to try on some shoes. That hopefully it will be uh, pretty comfy. So, what are we gonna discuss today? Well, let's see here, let's pick a subject. I'm thinking we're gonna talk about the nation of the free. Uh, now, I'm, uh, my mind slips me on the names because the names of this, of the land of the gods, which is the area which we're going to discuss. Uh, they were based on a random generator, the, the map generator which I used to make the geography. I also took the uh, names from, modified a few a little, but nothing major. So, with that. Let's talk about the land of the free, Tarovia, if I'm not mistaken. Tarovia is a nation built on, as a concept. Uh, I think the article on it right now on the World Anvil site is, I'll fold the deck, World Anvil page is, um, there are three main concepts. Your freedom of movement, you can may go where you want. Like hospitality, you need to be welcoming. You have uh, freedom of expression. Say whatever you want. I will forever be cursed to make these require editing. Won't I? <laughs> oh well. So, uh, freedom of expression. Say whatever you want. Express yourself as you will. Then you have the third law, which. Uh, I think it is, yeah, the storage, the keeping of lore, which is learned from the past, essentially. Addendum to this video. Um, I shaped the article that I've got up, and uh, the rules of the nation, which is Kashita, not Tarovia. Tarovia is another place. Very nice. Um, <clears throat> freedom of the rules of manner and the rules of the law. You need to treat others as you wish to be treated yourself. Freedom of speech, religion and expression are without bounds and make sure to keep a record of history to learn from it. End of addendum, back to the original video. Uh, this nation is probably the one that in the land of the gods have the most Cor most corruption is a bad term for it. Oh goodness, I love how this is looking. The fall is coming in the beautiful sense. Look at that. Um, most corruption is a poor choice of words because, well, it's hard to define what corruption is. This nation is a very good sowing ground for corruption. It's very easy for things to go corrupt. Um, and with that comes the fact that groups do shut. Uh, there's the city, which uh, I think they call it the city of sewers, or the sewer city. One of those things that is marked out on the current map which I might actually flash it up on screen now, seeing as I'm anyway gonna have to edit this. Um, <laughs> but, main aspect, if I can do that via my phone editing. Um, main aspect is, of this city, that you have the center of a crime syndicate. Uh, led by were rats. Now, I'm still, I still got to develop this a lot, there's a lot to work on in this concept, but basically I'm thinking that there is a crime syndicate across that nation, which, now they're not terrible, they're probably going to be a lot based on the Yakuza of uh, Japan, where, um, you know, they do some good, but they are, they are also a mafia, like, uh, you do what you do, and in Tarovia that's fine. Because you're sort of protected by a law to this. 
it is a very is freedom drag to the degree that it sort of works but if someone came along to the system and decided that fuck it I'm just gonna take this they could the only thing holding Tarovia together is the shared shared values of this freedom and everyone has their own take on it but if everyone agrees on the same core principles oh shucks uh one moment let me just retire and we're back <laughs> i had to retire that too my mustache is falling apart as i speak oh well what can you do so as long as everyone agrees on the shared base values the system sort of works they can sort of hold themselves together uh, but that means that there is potential for this crime syndicate to grow. The lands are free, though also has another fun little place. You have a, a gnome volcano. Uh, essentially, it's a sleeping volcano. <laughs> sleeping for now. It's most likely not dead is the main aspect. Uh, in which a gnome city has been built where they tinker around and they play around with their little inventions and um, yeah it's be a fascinating um, observational experiment, shall we say. This volcano though also has the aspect that they have airships in it, which uh, they might like fly out of the volcano, which could be a very nice visual, if you ask me, at the very least. And um, well, it's, it's my fault. Are you taking down trees everywhere? I do not approve. Um, anyhow, that is the rough idea of Tarovia, the land of free. North of that, you have a nation which is much more law based. It probably also, if I'm not wrong, uh, that's where I have a regional place the deep woods of the high elves, or like the high elves have their place there and some of them are some of them have strayed a little uh, some of them are very uh, self-confident shall we say whereas other factions are not as you know, up their own ass but alas that's just how the world is And we're back again. Oh. Nettles. Shoot. Um. So, line of retreat. Yeah, north of them you have the. Some elves who are pretty stuffed up, and above that you have a trade alliance. Uh, basically, as a merchant nation. Which is fun. Uh, but yeah, Torovia, line of retreat. It's. Filled with all kinds of things. Let me make sure I check. What's my original point here? Well, this video is definitely less than optimally edited. <laughs> uh, I guess record is the right time, yeah. But unless it's besides the point. Tarovia onwards. We have mentioned uh, the we mentioned the gnomes. We mentioned the city of um, of sewers. Now, let's take some other highlights. You have one city where I'm thinking it's going to be essentially run. The guards of that city are uh, members of a monastery that is nearby devoted to the lore keepers. Uh, the lore keepers being a very loosely defined organization. They're very much a 
very world spanning loose group. Anyone could really call themselves a lore keeper. Uh, though you might want to share the base values of the lore keepers. Now what they are is mostly it's just to keep a record of any knowledge you pick up. If that be orally or written, uh, basically it's just you keep tabs on things. Now, lore keepers come in many shapes. There are lore keeper wizards, uh, there are lore keepers who are clerics. They don't follow a god though, necessarily. They might have a god they devote themselves to, in which case they're a servant of that god. And then they are a lore keeper, secondly, at least in the eyes of that god. Because, um, for some reason, Deities prefer to be first priority over this ragtag group of uh, people. Honestly, that's a good way of defining the Lord Keepers. Think a uh, adventuring party that spans continents. That's a decently apt description. This is a very awkward holding of the camera here, but it works. So. Goodness grief. So, what is the next thing on this list? Well, let's think, yes, science. As mentioned, this nation focused largely and heavily on the concept of freedom. The concept of free expression, free, ex free exploration and sharing knowledge. Thus, many cities have little groups of people who basically their favorite pastime is just, oh yeah, we're just gonna sit around and we're going to talk. If that be about philosophy, if it's, um, some sort of philosophy, uh, science, the metaphysical, all kinds of subjects might be discussed by these little groups who are just gatherings of people who are passionate. This is largely based on the concepts of old Greece, where you know, the idea of having people just discuss was not a um, huge drama show, but more you question of trying to further your own intellect. Uh, of course, you know, some assholes were in there, but uh, I like to think that every era has their own piece of shit who decides to uh, just not give a shit. So, aside, that aside, this though comes to its peak. And one city which has a major school of science. Now, this is very much still under development. And the concept of science in a world that has magic is a fascinating one to me. I mean, after all, if you live in a world where singular people can learn to master the elements, there are people who can raise dead out of their grave, either as their thralls or back to life. When you have people who can snap their fingers and now there's a ball of fire that explodes and kills 10 soldiers in an instant, then science becomes an interesting topic because uh, it really will depend on how much magic is in this world, doesn't it? But I like to think that magic, there are some people who aren't necessarily students of magic as much as they are the workings of it. The early mages might have seen it as, okay, we're trying to control this strong force. I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, there's an analogy in Dragon Ball. No, it's Bleach. Bleach. Oh, showing a little bit of the fact that I sometimes watch anime. 
where they describe the spirit force of uh, main character Ichigo. This is not real spoilers because this is like the early show. We describe it as uh, most people have a tap which they close off. This guy just has it beaming all the time. Which, uh, less than optimal when some creatures notice that thing and they uh, they think, ooh, tasted candy. I'm gonna have some of that. <laughs> wow, that, that's a clip. <laughs> that's like a gift, probably. Um, but depending on how you look at it, magic could be seen as fantastic, and clerics do their spell casting through very fantastical means. They're powered by divine entities that are larger than life. Wizards, at, at least the way I like to look at wizards, is that they simply study how this works. How do I make this thing do this thing? A uh, very simplistic way of looking at it is if... Let's find something here. Ah yes, a rock. If I take this rock, I can throw it up, I can catch it. Or maybe I can't. Uh, if I could throw it up and I could catch it, this lets me know I can make force go this way, direction. It doesn't take much from that to figure out that you could throw it forwards. Now, imagine in a world where you've seen other people use greater powers. Clerics use the power of God. Power of nature. Sorcerers just fling things forwards. In such a world, you realize that there is some form of force around me that's letting these things happen. And just like you might figure out, oh, okay, wind blows, as you might hear in this video. Wind blows. Now there's no um, no uh, wind turbines nearby, I'm afraid, so I can't make a full-on vision. Oh, wait. We're sort of in the distance, but you can't see them. Um, a wind turbine. If you place that down, you can see that, okay, this spins. What if I connect that to something? And there you have technological development. Imagine if you learn that, okay, I can channel this power through myself. That's sort of what a wizard does. They learn to control it Instead of being a channel, they learn how to mathematically calculate it, so to speak. And to bring it all back to Terovia, now picture that you have a large group of wizards who decide, okay, well, sure, the druids and the, the, uh, the clerics, they control this power, they, you know, they aren't really learning it as much as they are their conduits for their greater power. Even more so, maybe with... Uh, actually, warlocks might be more likely to join these guys. The main aspect is, they look at magic like a science. If you were to tell someone 50, just 50 years or 100 years ago, just at the start of the 1900s, maybe like, you know, World War II, this might not be as crazy to say, but tell someone in late 1600s, maybe, uh, early 1600s, uh, that in the future, or even like you'll bring something to them, this phone that I'm recording this on is able to take images of me at such a speed that you can picture me. You guys can see me right now, even though I'm nowhere near you, most likely. And even if I was near you, you'd be looking at a different view on it. How is that different from illusion magic? Now imagine you have that scientific look on it. Then you lead it to a different view on magic and you view it as a science what I'm le trying to get to is the potential for Magitech because that's fucking cool. So I'm closing into the end of my route, but 
that might be something for the future to discuss. It's basically there's a, a whole area, a district of a city, that's just devoted to the study of science more so than the arcane. Now, that will have to wait for another time. And we might also another time think about another thing that popped into my head. Ah oh, yes, Warforged and the guns. Guns, because Terovia has a direct link to the Pleasure Eyes, where guns is a big thing. And if you have a, a volcano full of, of gnomes who tinker away, guns might come to be soon. But guns in this world have a past of... Um, it's an interesting story, but it's a story for another time. Now, thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments below, do you want to know more about Magitech? Or more about guns next time? We'll see if I can provide that. If I can see the comments before. Uh, thank you all for watching. Stay happy. And see ya.